The name Walt Whitman usually encourages thoughts of poetry, comradeship, equality and America. But it's unlikely that his name makes many think of the northern English mill town of Bolton. Now, presenter, writer and keen walker Stuart McConey heads to the Lancashire Moors to join an international group of devotees for their annual Whitman Walk. Walking with Whitman starts with one of his most famous poems. This is from Song of the Open Road. Afoot and light-hearted I take to the open road. Healthy, free, the world before me. The long brown path before me leading wherever I choose. Henceforth I ask not good fortune. I myself am good fortune. Henceforth I whimper no more, postpone no more, need nothing. Done with indoor complaints, libraries, querulous criticisms, strong and content, I travel the open road. The earth, that is sufficient. I do not want the constellations any nearer. I know they are very well where they are. I know they suffice for those who belong to them. Still here I carry my old delicious burdens. I carry them, men and women. I carry them with me wherever I go. I swear it is impossible for me to get rid of them. I am filled with them, and I will fill them in return. Allons, the road is before us. It is safe. I have tried it. My own feet have tried it well. Be not detained. Let the paper remain on the desk unwritten and the book on the shelf unopened. Let the tools remain in the workshop. Let the money remain unearned. Let the school stand. Mind not the cry of the teacher. Let the preacher preach in his pulpit. Let the lawyer plead in the court and the judge expound the law. Camarado, I give you my hand. I give you my love more precious than money. I give you myself before preaching or law. Will you give me yourself? Will you come travel with me? Shall we stick by each other as long as we live? But we'll, we'll move off. All right. Well, it's May 30th, 2009. Probably one of the most glorious May the 30th we've had in ages. It's absolutely beautiful here up in the moors, or on the moors just above Bolton at a place called Barrow Bridge. And we're here because tomorrow is Walt Whitman's birthday. Of course, Walt's not around anymore to celebrate that. But this group of people you may be able to hear in the background are, they are a group of what we might call Whitmanites who gather every year on his birthday to go up on a walk that commemorates Whitman, that celebrates Whitman, celebrates his poetry, celebrates his philosophy and the things he stood for, democracy, egalitarianism, liberty, comradeship, things like this. They read his poetry, uh, they have a good time, they've suddenly got the weather for it today. So I'm gonna join them on the walk. And it also has a, a legacy in that it's, um, it's, it celebrates Bolton as a town's long-standing affection and association with Walt Whitman. Hello. I'm Stuart. Hello. Hello, Stuart. Can we ask you a little bit about what we're doing here today? Well, it's the Walt Whitman Walk, and it's celebrated every year. And Walt Whitman was one of an American poet who was alive during the Civil War, and he made contact, although he never came to England, he made contact with the early socialists in Bolton, and there was a great communication that went on between them. OK, well, I've read this every year and I thought people were getting fed up with it, but seemingly not. Oh, Captain, my Captain, our fearful trip is done. The ship has weathered every rack, the prize we sought is won. The port is near, the bells I hear, the people all exulting, while follow eyes the steady keel, the vessel grim and daring. But, oh, heart, 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 oh, the bleeding drops of red, where on the deck my Captain lies, fallen cold and dead. Oh, Captain, my Captain, rise up and hear the bells. Rise up, for you the flag is flung, for you the bugle trills. For you bouquets and ribboned wreaths, for you the shores are crowding. For you they call, the swaying mass their eager faces turning. Here, Captain, dear father, this arm beneath your head. It is some dream that on the deck you've fallen cold and dead. My captain does not answer, his lips are pale and still. My father does not feel my arm, he has no pulse or will. 
The ship is anchored safe and sound, its void closed and done. From fearful trip, the victory ship comes in with object won. Exalt, O shores, and ring, O bells, but I, with mournful dread, walk the deck, my captain lies, fallen, cold and dead. Well, I'll take you back into Bolton itself in the museum, though, to tell you just about this long-standing, rather strange friendship between a great American poet and this Lancashire town. I'm standing on the rather handsome crescent behind Bolton Town Hall uh, and in specifically uh, Bolton Art Gallery, Library and Museum, which houses amongst an aquarium and other things, the uh, archive of letters and photographs and other assorted objects relating to uh, Bolton's connection with Walt Whitman. And I'm joined by Stuart Murray, who is a leading Whitmanite from the town. Hello, Stuart. Hello, Stuart. Hello. And uh, you're going to tell me a bit about uh, Whitman's connection with Bolton and what we've got here. So, um, shall we go inside? Yeah, fine. We're going up the steps into the uh, museum and... I can see already that there's a plaque here. Do you want to just tell people what this plaque says and uh, what it's about, what the significance of it is, Stuart? Yeah, we've got about seven plaques dotted around uh, Bolton and the, uh, the moorland. Um, this is the largest one. This is signifying the fact that the largest collection of uh, Walt Whitman material and ephemera outside of America right. is within this building. Wow. And around the outside of the, uh, the plaque... I believe a leaf of grass is no less than the journey work of the stars, WW, which I guess is from Leaves of Grass, his most famous work. Yeah, yeah. Each, each of the plaques that we've got has got a quote from Walt Whitman. Well, let's go inside and see what, uh, what uh, lies awaiting inside here. Well, we're uh, inside a museum now, past the dinosaur skeleton and the mollusks. Waiting for me here is uh, Julie Lamara, who is the local studies librarian of Bolton Museum and Archive. And um, you've brought me some gloves. Here, you can actually get me putting them on now. There you go. Well, tell me what you've, what you've got here, Julie. Right, these are just uh, a few of the items from the, uh, the Whitman collection. Uh, very mixed collection, as yeah. you can see. Lots of letters, books, photographs. We even have a, a canary. It was given as a, a gift from Whitman to James Wallace, and he was known as the master of the Eagle Street College, the group that yeah. met to talk about Whitman and recite his poetry. Walt was very pleased, he was very happy that he had followers in Bolton um, and he never forgot the followers, even though most of the correspondence went through Wallace and Johnson, uh, the group grew quite large. Um, there were some famous um, followers of, of Whitman, like Keir Hardy, right. um, quite a few socialists uh, followed Whitman. and. Um, the, the actual group, they met on a Monday evening to recite Walt Whitman's poetry and to gather together and read the letters that were sent backwards and forwards. Mention of the poetry, Julie, leads me on to this, which is, I guess is something I very much do need um, uh, my customs officer gloves for. Um, this is a, a first edition, I believe. Yes. Brooklyn, New York, 1855, of... Leaves of Grass, the, the, uh, the, the classic, if you like, Whitman poem, the, probably the best-known poem, and the one that embodies so much of his, his philosophy and outlook. And here, for Dr Johnston, written there, yeah. As I ebbed with the ocean of life, as I wended the shores I know, as I walked where the ripples continually wash you, Pominock. I've come upstairs into one of the galleries in the uh, heart, as it were, of the museum. We've got a cutting of a giant redwood. Uh, we've got some North American mammals here, um, the grey squirrel, and uh, a rather more welcome visitor here in um, the form of a, a stuffed canary beneath a picture of one Walt Whitman. And uh, Julian Stewart is still with me. And Julie, can I uh, ask you then to tell me the significance of this uh, rather pretty... Uh, although some would say uh, slightly odd stuffed canary on a little display inside a sort of bell jar. Yes, the, uh, the Walt Whitman's canary um, came over with Dr Book when he came to visit the Bolton group and it was a present given to James Wallace from Whitman as a token of his esteem. 
So Buck was a sort of, uh, like an, almost an, an emissary, an ambassador from Whitman to the Bolton Group, was it? Was he just a sort of mate of Whitman's? He was. He was also um, a medical practitioner as well. Um, you must remember at this time Whitman was very sick. Mm -hmm. He had had a stroke. Um, a lot of the time he was in a wheelchair. And uh, this was in 1891, uh, just before Whitman actually died. And the, the canary is a favourite pet of Whitman's and uh, immortalised in My Canary Bird, which is uh, reprinted behind the um, unfortunate canary itself. Did we count great, O soul, to penetrate the themes of mighty books, absorbing deep and full from thoughts, plays, speculations, and now from thee to me, caged bird, to feel thy joyous warble, filling the air, the lonesome room, the long forenoon. Is it not just as great, O soul? Which is kind of, I guess, again, part of Whitman's philosophy about living things and spirituality and nature. And um, Stuart, if I can bring you in, uh, Stuart, again, Marie, beneath the canary... Something else I think of great significance to Whitmanites, uh, the loving cup, what's that? As it suggests, it's a friendship cup, it's about seven or eight inches high, it's got three handles on it, so it's easy to pass around the group when it's full of wine. This original one, we were able to take this out until just a few years ago. I think we do accept really that it's probably safer in the museum than up on the moors on a Saturday afternoon. And you've got, uh, you've got a new one that you can actually take out on the moors now? Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> I'm still here uh, in the uh, bowels, if I can use that expression, of, uh, of Bolton Library. And um, I'm with Paul Salveson, who is not just the author of With Walt Whitman in Bolton, subtitled Spirituality, Sex and Socialism in a Northern Milled Town. But um, would you call yourself one of the contemporary Whitmanites, Paul? Would well, that be fair? Certainly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So what is your connection with this and your interest stem from? Well, I'm a, a local historian, and back in the early 80s, I was researching it, a guy called Alan Clark, who wrote a lot about Bolton in the 19th century and early 20th century. And in one of his greatest books, really, Moylands and Memories, he talks about Bolton's connection with Walt Whitman. I thought, ah, oh, never come across that before. So uh, I started digging a little bit more, had a, a look around the library archives and discovered this amazing collection of uh, Walt Whitman memorabilia, original letters, the leaves of grass and so on. So I did a little booklet about it and a talk in the local socialist club and a few of us thought, well, yeah, why don't we do a walk like the Whitmanites did? So we revived the walk in 1984. I think it, we actually created, if you like, a third generation of Whitmanites mm. and we're, we're all still alive and well today. And I'm interested in how, it seems to me, at least three disparate mm. or seemingly disparate things seem to come together in what this is about. There's, there's poetry, there's walking and the enjoyment of the mm. great outdoors, and there's a subtext about sort of politics and philosophy as well, isn't there? Would you yeah. agree that it's, a, it's, an, it's an interesting mix of subjects? Absolutely, and, and that really links up with uh, the Whitmanites way back in the 1880s and 1890s, because the first, you know, the, the first generation, Johnston and Wallace, although on one level they were quite respectable characters, if you look at photographs of them, they're very, very well dressed. But they were socialists, they were members of the Independent Labour Party. And one of the attractions to Whitman was his great democratic appeal to the ordinary working man and woman, as well as his great love of the countryside. And also there's a deeper philosophical element to all this. You know, Whitman really was a sort of mystic and had similarities with some of the sort of writings of, of Buddhism and so mm. on. So they were very interested in that as well. And I think there's a, a relevance there to the present day. So I've seen the original Leaves of Grass, I've seen the correspondence, I've seen the stuffed canary, I've seen the loving cup, I've seen a lot of historical artefacts that tell me about the, the history, going back over 100 years, of this, this unique friendship and link between Bolton and Walt Whitman, but uh, it's, it's an ongoing thing, it's a living thing, so uh, let's get back out onto the moors and see how today's Whitmanites are keeping this uh, special relationship alive. We're now entering Walkerfold Woods, which has got a little signpost here. And in the distance, I can see the, uh, well, I was going to say a little group of people. It's actually quite a sizable group of people sort of snaking off now on this path into a sort of wooded glade where I believe we're going to take another stop and hear some more poetry. Just, just say we've, we've uh, <laughs> ja Jacqueline's just uh, christened our new uh, loving cup. For, for those of you who've seen the original in the library, this bears no resemblance, other than the fact that it's got three handles. 
Um, and it says around the top, I'll give you my sprig of lilac for the dear love of comrades. So uh, we've got at least four bottles of wine, so there's plenty to go around. So we'll, we'll just uh, pass it round, okay? Avoid the road on the way back. <laughs> Go on, please. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm so pleased to be here with my husband from New York City. Um, my name is Karen Carboner. I, I teach at New York University. I teach Whitman at New York. And um, this one is from I Sing the Body Electric. Just a short snippet. I have perceived that to be with those I like is enough. To stop in company with the rest at evening is enough. To be surrounded by beautiful, curious, breathing, laughing flesh is enough. To pass among them or touch anyone or rest my arm ever so lightly round his or her neck for a moment. What is this then? I do not ask any more delight. I swim in it as in a sea. Hello, Alan. I'm Stuart. Hi. Tell me about the walk and about yourself and about why you're here. Um, I'm a friend of Paul Salverson's who, who resurrected this tradition a long time ago, 26 years ago, I think it is now. And I've come on the walks most years since then. And I didn't know anything about Walt Whitman, really. But uh, I've got interested in the poetry since, in some of the poetry, you know. And... Um, I come partly for the poetry, but also for the countryside, for the walk, and that's part of Whitman, you know. Yeah, he, absolutely. The song of the open road and everything. So, so I think that's that's why I come. That's in. why you come. Yeah. And the wine. Oh, a bit <laughs> of wine as well. Yes. I'm sorry. And I'm the, no, joking, no, no, of absolutely right. And the new loving cup, you know. Oh, here it is. Here it's here's the new loving oh, cup. Oh, hang on. Oh, come on. I think this might be our turn, aren't it? Yes, go on. Did you have to stand? Did you have to do anything in particular? No, 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 no. Here I go. <laughs> Lovely. There you go, Annie. Thank you. I won't wait for seconds. It would be rather rude, wouldn't it? It's passed on to someone else now. Will someone read again here? Yes, yes. Great. I might read myself. Allons. After the great companions and to belong to them. They too are on the road. They're the swift and majestic men. They are the greatest women, enjoyers of calms of seas and storms of seas, sailors of many a ship, walkers of many a mile of land, habitués of many distant countries, habitués of far distant dwellings, trusters of men and women, observers of cities, solitary toilers, pausers and contemplators of tufts, blossoms, shells of the shore, Dancers at wedding dances, kissers of brides, tender helpers of children, bearers of children, soldiers of revolts, standers by gaping graves, lowerers down of coffins, journeyers over consecutive seasons, over the years, the curious years, each emerging from that which preceded it. Journeyers, as with companions, namely their own diverse phases, fourth steppers, from the latent, unrealized baby days. Forever alive, forever forward, stately, solemn, sad, withdrawn, baffled, mad, turbulent, feeble, dissatisfied, desperate, proud, fond, sick, accepted by men, rejected by men. They go, they go. I know that they go, but I know not where they go, but I know that they go toward the best towards something great. We've just got a couple of uh, greetings from people who aren't here. <laughs> this is from uh, Michael Robertson, who was with us last year from uh, College of New Jersey. And he says, uh, last night was the sixth annual New York City celebration of Whitman's birthday. I attended for the first time and had the chance to read Paul's greeting. That kicked off the event in a wonderful way. I read a bit of my article about the Bolton celebration. It was fun to evoke the Bolton ramble in this very different setting on Park Avenue at 85th Street with fleets of limousines and yellow taxis roaring by outside. OK, this is from the Washington Friends of Walt Whitman from uh, Neil Richardson. 
Starts off with some lines from Whitman, so I'll give you that, and then the, the letter. Come, said my soul, such verses for my body let us write, for we are one, that should I after death invisibly return, or long, long hence in other spheres, there to some group of mates the chance resuming, tallying earth's soil, tree, winds, tumultuous waves, ever with pleased smile I may keep on. Hail and greetings from lovers across the ocean. The lilac fades on the branch here, yet it marks the passage of another season and offers a new opportunity to celebrate our common love for Walt and his day of birth. The Washington friends of Walt Whitman extend our hands to you and we will travel with you in spirit as you celebrate with your ramble and as you pass the loving cup from one to another. On behalf of the Washington friends of Walt Whitman, and then there's a, a website there. <laughs> My name is Bill Briley. I'm doing this Walt Whitman walk because I, I came to know about it from Bank Street Writers, which is a local writing group. To be honest, I didn't know nothing at all about Walt Whitman before we started this walk. Nothing at all, even though I'm a poet myself. And I write uh, with Whitman in mind. It's, it's only recently that I've come to realise that my poems are similar to Whitman's. Perhaps not as good, but similar. The choir arrived in threes and fives. To the poet's church that has eight sides, old bass oak groans, even lower, the spinning sycamore, elm row and birch range baritones, our world's their church, old bass oak groans, dark willow, high lonesome pine, tenor fine, sopranos trill, blossom cherry, contralto berry, rose and thorn will sing until tunes have been born. Sopranos trilled, bass oaks groaned. Walkers walked. Walkers walked. What's happening at the moment, and the reason I'm speaking quietly, is I've moved off to one side because we've stopped at a sort of um, riverbank glade area in Walker Fold Woods, and different people are coming forward uh, as well as drinking wine and eating fruit. We're passing around the loving cup and we're having chocolates and strawberries and things like that, which is lovely, obviously. But also, people are reading selections of their favourite Whitman poems, and indeed, um, uh, we've had a bit of larking, we've had a bit of a local poet's own stuff. It's very much a celebration of poetry, but Whitman's the focus of it. And what people are doing is, um, in the democratic spirit Whitman would have approved of, just stepping forward in a very ad hoc way and, you know, reading reading their own favourite Whitman poems or selections of their favourite Whitman poems. And we're enjoying a very, a very leisurely little break here, I guess about halfway around the walk, and um, listening to some poetry before we move on. I dreamed in a dream... I saw a city invincible to the attacks of the whole of the rest of the earth. I dreamed that I was the new city of friends. Nothing was greater there than the quality of robust love. It led the rest. It was seen every hour in the actions of the men of that city and in all their looks and words. We've just come, we've done a bit of road walking for about the last 15 minutes, and we are now just on the edge of the West Pennine Moors open access land, uh, recent uh, victory for walkers, the right to roam and all that. We, we've stopped here for a minute at a stone that says, and I'm reading this for the first time, so forgive me, will you come on Sunday morning? On Sunday the 6th of September, 1896, 10,000 Boltonians marched by this spot to reclaim an ancient right-of-way over Winter Hill. This path is now dedicated as a public right-of-way for the enjoyment of all, 6th of September, 1996. So this is marking a... Um, a uh, mass trespass? Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, Paul, tell us about it. Yeah, well, 100 years ago, the local landowner de decided to close off this part of the moor, which generations of Bolton people had walked over. For and so, sporting reasons, was it, as they say? So, was it, so he could shoot so his he grouse. So shoot birds, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and he was a particularly uh, obnoxious character. Right. And there was a huge demonstration. The first one was on Sunday, the 6th of September, but there were another two as well, which attracted similar numbers of people. And the significance of this particular location is that there was a bit of a contretemps with some of the gamekeepers. Right. And the, the police were called and a wagon was dispatched up from Bolton. And some of the leading protagonists of the, the actual mass trespass were taken to court and uh, heavily fined. And some of the Whitmanites were involved in this as well. In this, in the, in yeah. the 1896 yeah. disturbance. Yeah. yeah, indeed. Oh, well, good. Well, it's good to be here then uh, celebrating it when uh, now we can uh, 
when uh, no one's going to take a pot shot at us or any small defenceless birds either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Great, fantastic. Yeah. So, so where to next? Which way Down are we in? Down the tea room. Oh, tea good, room. excellent. It's about a mile. Excellent. I, I think we'll probably end up spread out now because okay. some people will smell the teapot. Uh, the lure of the teapot. Yeah, before others. But okay. it won't matter if we arrive in a straggle because no. I'm sure that will give time for them to get the uh, scones out. Super, mm. thanks. Great. My name's Sheila Robotham. I'm a professor at Manchester University. And um, I first heard about these Whitman walks in the 1980s and I came on one and then I came last year and... Uh, I'm interested in Walt Whitman because I write about people who knew him, like Edward Carpenter. But I also used to love Walt Whitman when I was young because I read Walt Whitman because he was on the beat reading list when I was at school. <laughs> and so he is someone I've always liked and related to. And the walks are fantastic because there's such a great mixture of people and such lovely fellowship and good feeling among people. I enjoy them. Though I'm not very athletic, so I'm a bit puffed at the moment. <laughs> I'm Graham Goff. I've lived in Bolton 40 years, been a member of Bolton Socialist Club for almost that long. So this is a group of people that I know very well. It's, I can't think of a better way of spending a Saturday afternoon than out with a bunch of friends out on these moors celebrating Walt Whitman's poetry and contribution to... Bolton Life. Well, you can probably hear from that that we're back on the main road, and indeed we're back where we started several hours ago, three hours ago, I guess, maybe something like that. Uh, the uh, Brian Hay Tea Shop, I believe, and this is where, from a conversation I had with a nice lady here earlier on in the day when we were setting up, there's some um, there's some tea and scones awaiting us, which I think everyone will be more than ready for. Hi, uh, can I just say a few words to you before we go? Thank you very much for letting us come with you today. We hope we've not been too intrusive into your day. It's been really, uh, it's been a lovely day. It's been really inspiring. I think it's been fantastic from the point of view of both the poetry and uh, or evidently the sense of, um, of Whitman's ideals that you're all carrying on in your various ways. And you can see I've been uh, enshrined in the camaraderie and fellow feeling that I've seen today. It's been really, really a lovely day. Thank you very much. I'm going to uh, take the liberty of reading one last thing, if that's OK. Um, this is a very short poem by Whitman, obviously, called To the Reader at Parting. Now, dearest comrade, lift me to your face. We must separate a while. Here, take from my lips this kiss. Whoever you are, I give it especially to you. So long, and I hope we shall meet again. Thank you. Walking with Whitman was presented by Stuart McConey. It was produced by Russell Crewe and was a Made in Manchester production for BBC Radio 4.